sure we're live, kicking in, and we'll do our little intro. Make sure the sound is coming up. We haven't been in the kitchen for a while, gang. Uh, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another live stream. Now, what we're gonna do today is uh, basically, I have a whole bunch of stuff lined up to show you guys. And it's all related, almost all related to a previous video we put out. Let me show you the previous video. Um, it was about a month ago, month and a half ago, a couple of months ago, where it's in the food playlist. Um, if you're following us on YouTube and if you do a search, you can find it. It was basically us um, sort of making a video of showing you how, what I do with the harvest every year of, uh, every year basically harvest mint, right? I cut it up and hang it or just dry it on um, on towels and stuff right and then we end up jarring it and this year the harvest was really good we got a lot of great mint so i ended up harvesting a fair bit so i hung the stuff to dry and we ended up making a video of uh, showing you guys how i jar uh, the mint right and we have usually what i do in the kitchen i keep the stuff uh, the jars of mint either here or somewhere else and i if they're sitting out i put a rag on it so the mint, the jars don't get hit with sun, right? And the rest of them we put in the cupboard. We've got a fair bit of uh, jarred mint that we're gonna use. So the mainstream for this, the food stream, is gonna be me going through about a few different dishes where we end up using the dry mint, okay? And one of the things, one of the places that I do end up using mint a lot is related to another video we put out, which was a ASMR math video, where I showed you uh, the main types of teas I end up making, right? And we did sort of a little bit of mathematics, a little bit of commutations, per permutations and commutorics, and uh, sort of looked at the different combinations of tea that we can make, right? And one of, the, one of the ones was mint, and that's the video, oops, this is the video where we put that together, sort of an ASMR food related video, sort of overlapping with the mathematics, right? So this stream that we're doing right now, what we're gonna do in the kitchen with the dried mint is sort of related to both of these videos, okay? That's my little intro. If you're watching this, uh, if you, there's a couple of people already alive, I said there's more than a couple of people already arrived. Welcome to the live stream, gang. And uh, if you're watching this live, um, I'm just doing a little short intro for people who are watching this uh, video on another platform, maybe BitChute, YouTube, or somewhere else that we're going to load it on as well, right? Uh, sort of this stream sort of related to these two videos here, okay? And what I want to do right now is boil some water and make some straight up mint tea. I've been drinking, uh, to set up for the stream, I've been drinking my Persian black tea that I showed you guys we'll make. But since the theme for this stream is mint tea. I'm gonna change up the tea, right? And uh, we're just gonna make some straight out uh, mint tea, okay? So let me take these uh, two videos down. Actually, let me read the comments, see who's popped in. Zare, how are you doing, brother? <laughs> How's life? Altruz, how you, how you doing, man? Doing good, doing good. Looking forward to the stream. It's been a while since we went into the kitchen, right? Um, People have been saying they really wanted to do some food videos uh, for the last little while. Here, let me take these down because uh, that way everyone knows what, what it is that we're doing. I love your shirt. Thanks, man. <laughs> it's actually a design that my nephew made. I made some tea last night with uh, orange peels and unfiltered honey. Oh, nice, man. Orange peels. Uh, this is, uh, lemon and orange peels is fantastic as well with tea right as for as far as the shirt goes yeah my nephew it's sort of uh there isn't too many of these around they're sort of custom made um, he does uh, custom designs and stuff too so we made these shirts a long time ago um, and it's one of my favorite shirts to wear i think we've done one other cooking video with this shirt on as well this water on here boil this for now 
and I'll show you the angles uh, the angles that we're going to be using oh by the way if you want to here I'll show you his artwork as well my nephews uh, send you to his website if you're interested uh, Renon how are you doing hey Chicho glad I could finally catch you one of these days ah nice man you made a nice stream you're making it too I've really been looking forward to coming back into the kitchen uh, like I like I mentioned um, I forgot the train of thought like I mentioned the there was a lot of people that were asking me to do more food videos you sort of stepped away from food and we're doing comic books and whatnot uh, by the way the the design here is uh, <laughs> put it over here that's his Instagram page right there okay and you can find and this character is called Esteban and he does this type of artwork it's, it's pretty unique it's pretty it's very nice artwork right so if you're interested in checking out his work and I'm pretty sure he'd be cool with doing designs for shirts and stuff too if you're interested okay uh, instagram.com backslash Nas okay and this guy's name is uh, Esteban <laughs> this character okay uh, aside from that um, a lot of people here let me show you the angles here the camera angles we're gonna use uh, this is the camera angles this is the T right here that I'm putting on we're just gonna boil that okay so we're gonna boil the tea and let me do this there's a list of uh, how many things am I gonna show you check this out uh, here let me take down and we're not gonna use this element here what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put a cutting board here I'm gonna show you the work that we're gonna do uh, because there's a couple of cook stuff that we're gonna make uh, two three there's, there's we're gonna use this element for cooking and this element for cutting and prepping and there's a couple of cold dishes that I'm gonna show you that I use the mint for a lot a lot okay uh, let me check this out hey Chicho nice to catch your stream I love the streams and the videos keep up the good work. oh we'll do biggie we'll do thank you for being here uh, kitchen streams love cooking so it's a fun stream to be on I I do enjoy this a lot and it gives me I like multitasking so I end up multitasking a lot okay let me turn off this guy for now okay we leave this on because any any place that we're getting something done we're gonna leave the camera going most likely okay I see a bucket of honey. Yeah. <laughs> One bucket of honey. Honey, I've been going through a lot of honey, man. And uh, what we end up doing is we take the buckets of honey, uh, and then this is our honey use jar, right? So when this guy goes down, and you can see it's down pretty low now. I don't know how many we've gone through so from the new batch, and then we fill it up again. So this is the one that's open, and we have a whole bunch of honey. <laughs> place we already gave uh, uh, for those of you that don't know we did a uh, honey jarring video um, that we ended up doing and in the honey jarring video let me show you one other thing in the, in the honey jarring video uh, we already gave away one of the jars as a present to someone right and in the honey jarring video uh, I had the persimmon sitting where the camera is right now because we were shooting the video from this side right and I showed you guys persimmons and I said you wanna you know I have a whole bunch of these as you can tell like, I had to move them over there because I got the camera and the mic and everything set up here right and I said you know I brought you the persimmon and it was pretty hard and this is pretty hard right and I said you have to sort of wait until they're really ripe for you to eat them right and they're slowly starting to ripen Take a look at this and well slowly this one's done right take a look this is how ripe you want it I want to show you how squishy this is right uh, let me go like this hopefully you can see it right this is perfect and you know what we're gonna eat this <laughs> uh, I got one in the fridge I'm gonna eat the cold one I'm gonna take this one put it in the fridge and then bring the one from the fridge that's cold
So I'm going to crack this one open. Okay. Um, and I'm going to keep the door closed. Okay. But what you see there, the plants you see there, those are the plants that we just did a cleaning from the patio and we brought them whatever plants that we have on the indoors. Not all of them. Some plants we take out for in the spring and bring in in the fall. So in the sunroom, I got a whole bunch of plants that I've brought in from the outside. And, um, you know, we go through cleaning and sort of trimming and stuff when we bring them in. They just brought them in, you know, a couple of days ago. And it's been raining, so the pots are really heavy. So I'm going to wait until the pots dry out a little bit. Okay. So let me close the door. Maybe uh, we'll do... Uh, We'll do uh, a video of cleaning the pots. I'm just gonna catch up with some of the comments that are being that have been said. I see we got a ha ha. Chicho, love catching you live. Awesome, nice to have you, Jack. Nice to have you. Yay! It's the <laughs> calm guy with a dope beard. I think Chicho is even happier talking about food and he is about com I food and comics, man. Those are the two things that. Well, I love a few different things, but food and comics, uh, those are two amazing things uh, to talk about and to do, right? So let me bring this out here. Okay. Let's turn on this camera as well. Check it out. Let's bring in our persimmon, right? Okay. I'm going to bring out a knife. Let's bring this out. Let's bring a little spoon. And you can cut this. Okay. You can cut this in half if you want. Right? Sometimes I end up cutting them in quarters. Like you take them like this and you go, let me do cut them like this in quarters, right? And you can eat it that way, right? But when it's ripe like this, like <laughs> really ripe, I just Cut the top and eat it out with a spoon, right? You just go gloop, 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 right? Maybe I'll wear my glasses like this. <laughs> well, back to reality uh, versus wolf for tomorrow. Catch you some other time. Okay, nice. thanks for popping by, play. Uh, are we making some tea? We're going to make some tea for sure. I got the tea boiling right now. Okay, the water boiling. So what's on the menu? Should I tell you what's on the menu? Okay, let me tell you what's on the menu. <laughs> Here's my menu. I had to make a menu because I'm making a whole bunch of different things. I didn't want to miss anything, right? Uh, we're going to make some mint tea. We're going to uh, boil some potatoes, cut up some potatoes, boil some potatoes. We're going to roast some potatoes, oven roast potatoes with mint. Okay, that's one of the places I use it. We're going to cut up some onions. We're going to make some uh, mint marinated lamb chops loin chops okay um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm gonna fry up some mint fry up some onions and most likely eggs how are you doing most likely some mushrooms as well heat up some soup and then I'll show you that's sort of a mix that we do we mix it into soup uh, we're gonna make a yogurt dish with cucumbers mulberries and mint and a little bit of salt okay we're gonna make a you uh yogurt drink uh that's really good for the desert and stuff like this and we're gonna make some pasta uh mint pasta and stuff okay that's a lot of x's <laughs> no, i've been missing the cooking streams yeah me too me too so let me show you this take a look at this i could just cut it like this right Usually I just peel it off, but I'm going to cut it like this, right? Take a look. And take a look at that. Nice and gooey. And you just scoop it out, right? And it's really sweet. It's really nice. Like, it's phenomenal, right? <laughs> wow. So good, so good, and you can just scrape around it. 
take out the layer when it's really ripe like this. So good, so good. It is. Uh, am I gonna make tahini? No, no tahini. Uh, Zara. Okay. We're gonna keep on eating this. Here, let me show you this. <laughs> what? You can just scoop it out. It's like watermelon. When you get it like this, it's easy to cut out in general. There are seeds here, by the way, but you can eat the seeds. Sometimes you can't, the seeds uh, become harder, but when they're picked like this, in general, there's like a gooey, harder gooey, think of that. There's a harder gooey thing on the inside. They usually have two or four seeds, I can't remember, but they're gooey, so it's a little bit harder. It's an amazing texture. So good. And there is there's one other type of uh, okay, I'm gonna take this off. Someone mentioned when we made the the last tea video or the tea video we made a long time ago, they mentioned that you don't want the let the water boil too much because you lose a lot of oxygen. So since that comment, whoever it was, thank you very much. Since that comment, I haven't been if I can get to it, been letting it boil too much because I still want the oxygen in there as well, right? As far as the persimmons con uh, concerned, there's two types of persimmons, the big ones, right? The one that we just cut up and these ones. These ones are really good too, but these ones you don't have to wait until they're like crazy ripe, okay? They are good when they're ripe as well though. How's the mouth feel? The mouth feels fantastic. And it's cold, and this is super sweet. Good luck. Nice. <laughs> it's, like, it's like delicious. Oh, so good. Okay, this is the tea that I have. I'm just gonna top up my tea. All right, this is just a Persian black tea. Okay, just a little bit. And I'm gonna dump this out and put the mint leaves in there. Right. Just a little rinse. Now, let's bring out the mint. This is one of the mints and this is uh, another jar that we made. This is a, uh, since we made the mint video, okay, since we made this video, let me show it to you again. Since we made this video, right, I think we got, I forgot how many mint jars we got. I think we got six, six of these things or five and a half of these things, right? This is the first one that we're going through. Actually, it was one and a bit. Right, there was a half another one or something like this. We're down to the end, so I'm just gonna use this much of it for the tea, okay. Oops, I got the mint video thing on. Let me take the mint video thing down. Boop. All right, here it is. So I'm just gonna use about this much for the tea, okay. And we're gonna need the rest of this mint, most likely. Well, we will be needing it. Ark the Ark, just out of the no, uh, nowhere. But did anyone see any circus dress up as uh, Theresa May with a? Oh, <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> I'm just so giggling to myself. No man, I honestly don't even understand what's happening with it. It's hilarious. <laughs> too funny, too funny. Look at this. Let me bring this out. And all I do usually is just just put it in, right? Stem and all, okay? So 
one more. Right. The stem gives it a more earthy taste. Okay, gives it a more earthy feel. If you just put mint leaves in there, uh, it gives it a stronger, less earthly, earth, earthy feel to it. Okay, it's uh, it's stronger, a little bit. Yeah, just earthy with the with the stems in there. <laughs> Let's put a little bit more. Let's make it strong mint tea. Okay, that's good. That's good enough. Let's put the water in there. There's a little bit here. And let's just pour the water in there. And this I don't have to rinse because I already... And pour the rest of the water in there. And the pot that we have. And let's get this going. Put the lid on. Okay, we don't need this guy. Let's put this guy here. Let's put this guy here. Okay. Nice. Conversations are going. That's good. That's good. Okay. The next thing we need to do, we need to set up, is we need to get the water boiling for the potatoes. Okay. So let me get the water boiling for the potatoes. Just fill it up this much. Right. We're gonna do enough to make a, a tray full of roasted potatoes. Okay, so let's get that going. And this is our snack while we're cooking. So we're gonna eat more of the persimmon. This side of it is bruised, so it's dark on the inside. Check it out. It got bruised, so it's dark on the inside. I don't eat that usually. Oh, I, uh, if we're running low, like you only got one of these juicy ones, maybe, but I got a lot back there. Right? Let's get mm, very nice. So good. Mm -hmm. Let's put the glasses here. I'm going to have another spoonful while I read a couple of comments. And then we'll, we'll cut up the potatoes. Okay. Never watched a cooking stream, but I'm digging this at like 920. <laughs> like relaxing before. Awesome. Hope you enjoy it. Some of the stuff we're making with the mint is uh, is very soothing for nighttime. Very soothing for nighttime. Take a look at that. Just the greenness of it. No, I'm going to finish this. <laughs> it's nice and cold. I don't want it to warm up. Look at that. And it gets a little, might get a little messy if the skin breaks. All right. So far, so good. Delicious. Yeah, I'm trying to stay informed Brexit, but still don't understand the whole thing. I haven't looked into it yet. I'm in the States. Don't need to tell you that everybody is a class of <laughs> As far as Brexit is concerned, one of the main issues that they, they're having is, um, from what I understand anyway, it's, uh, it's the border with Northern Ireland, Ireland, right? If goods will be able to go back and forward without taxes and stuff like this as a hard border or soft border or whatever. And all the trades, deals that they have with tariffs and stuff like that, those would be obsolete. So people, you know, businesses don't know what's going to happen with the taxes. Also foreign governments that have set up shop in the UK, they're worried that if Brexit happens without a trade deal, without understanding what the taxes and all the trades are going to be, then if they're making stuff in the UK, 
it's going to be more expensive and they're making stuff in the uk is going to be more expensive for people in the eu the rest of western europe i guess if you want to call it to buy their products because they have to go across a border now and vice versa okay that's the trade deal version of it the other version of it is uh, other main issues is the uk is being governed by oligarchs from brussels right and all you need to do really is do a little search on the head of the eu the person the president of the eu and take a look at his drunken antics in at ceremonies to figure out who these people are right when the guy's bitch slapping the leaders of other nations right the people supposedly them voted these them to represent them right and uh, on the budget front issue is any budget that any country in the EU passes uh, any government that wants to pass any budgets any government that belongs to the EU they have to get it okayed by Brussels by the oligarchs in Brussels on how that government is going to spend their money right and they can veto the they those members of Parliament uh, those members in the oligarchs in Brussels can veto a budget in Italy for example or veto a budget in Greece for example they can say no the Greek people cannot uh, spend their money based on what their representatives have decided to uh, spend on right there's a <laughs> there's a lot going on uh, okay let me put this down and this you can actually I'm not gonna throw this away because there's still goodness in there but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put it in a plate because it gets a little messy so I'm gonna put it in the fridge okay that way I'll eat it later it's, it's too good to even waste this even when you got a true there. now everything I just said about the EU please check into it I might have my facts uh, wrong a little bit uh, hopefully the chat will take care of it Hey Chicho, hello Sleepy Waves, how are you doing? People are really pushing for another referendum now because of how things are going. I want to leave, but if, uh, yeah, if, it'd be crazy if another referendum happens. Could you make any sort of uh, stock from that fruit or would it be way too sweet? Um, stock, you mean like a sauce or something to mix with other, other food? Oh this aside uh, I don't know I've never tried it is sweet it is sweet but when it's not sweet we're gonna cut up some potatoes okay when it's not sweet it's it's got a different feel to it okay uh, how many we're we gonna make okay let's cut up those ones okay. like a saucy puree most likely the puree would be amazing and then you could put some chili sauce in it or something and uh, give it a little spicy and maybe amazing with chicken it could be it could be I've never tried what's today's stream on um, we're gonna do use uh, if you remember if we made a drying mint video that we made so we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you guys uh, you know a few different ways that I use the dry mint in different things that I cook okay. And when I make roasted potatoes, sometimes I cook, cut them thin. Sometimes I cut them thicker. Uh, it really depends. But right now I'm going to cut them like medium size, right? So I'm breaking them down to about this size. Okay, that's the bigger size, and the smaller size would be around this, on the edges. And then once you do that, what basically ends up happening is, let's put this here. What end? one thing ends up happening is because we're cooking potatoes let me turn this down now because we're cooking potatoes we're cook, cook, cooking them together right uh, they're going to be under the same you know they're going to be boiling for the same amount they're going to be cooking in the oven for the same amount, right? amount of time 
So what's going to happen is uh, some of them will be more cooked than the others. Some of them will be more crispy. So it ends up being really good. You don't want the sizes to vary too much, right? Because if you do that, then some cook, some don't. Uh, but a little variation is not bad. You could even do mathematics on that, take the sizes and measure it, right? <laughs> Maybe we do someday. Maybe we do someday. I'm just going by sight of how much I need or how much I want to make, right? Everything is mass if you look hard enough. Yeah, everything is mathematics if you look hard enough. Sometimes you don't even have to look too hard on it, right? have to boil for long right it really doesn't we're not gonna totally cook it by boiling it what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some of the cooking that it was gonna do in the oven by boiling it and it's gonna make the potatoes more juicy on the inside and more you know when you bake it and then boil boil it uh, they're gonna be crispy on the outside and this is the boiling I never used to do. This is something that a friend of mine showed me how to do a few years ago. I go, hey, why are you boiling the potatoes? It goes off. Makes it, you know, you use less energy to uh, pan fry them or uh, bake them. Zero degrees right now and my feet are cold. Oh no. Warm them up. Jump up and down. Tink, how are you doing? I haven't seen you for a while. Hi, Chicho. Liking the beanie. Oh, thanks. Stay warm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's it's it, temperature here is getting cold, staying warm, so it's fluctuating a little bit, right? But we're getting into the cold season. We're getting into the cold season. Okay, let's put the potatoes in here. I'm just gonna do my. Picture a little bit on this. Okay. And let's put this guy here. Let's put all these guys over. Okay. Now that we've got that going, now we don't need to cook this for too long. Let me bring this. Let's just give it a little shake. And I'm not going to put the lid on. Because potatoes, what happens when it starts boiling, it might spill over. So I'm going to leave it open just a tad. Okay. That way I can take a look if it's... Usually I try to catch it. Usually I try to catch it. Okay. You guys listen to podcasts. I just asked Bob. Working, getting crazy. It's not political at all. Hard to see it. So what have we got going? What have we got going? We got the potatoes going. Let's cut up some onions. Let's cut up some onions. Let's drink some tea first. Yogurt, pasta. And by the way, do you guys want to make? Uh, what should we make? Do you want to make spaghetti or do you want to make gnocchi? Okay, I'm gonna make one pasta dish with mint and feta. 
up to you guys if you want to make gnocchi or if you want to make spaghetti okay i'm just putting that out there before i start boiling the water after the potatoes because i'm going to bake the potatoes um, for a while so what i'm going to do is i want to start off the baking i'm going to set up to 400 okay 400 yeah 400 is good okay so i'm going to turn that on usually check the oven to make sure I don't have anything in there, right? Gnocchi sounds nicer. Let's check it out. <laughs> There's a lot of gnocchi people. <laughs> nice. Spaghetti. Mama spaghetti. Gnocchi. Gnocchi is yummy. Oh no, I'm late. How's my eight spot? How you doing? <laughs> oh no, gnocchi sounds nice. Gnocchi. Okay, we got gnocchi going on. Straw poll link. Straw poll link. Yeah, I know. We should do like a poll thing. We'll have to set that up at some point. Do a little poll. Gnocchi or spaghetti. And people can vote and get the count, right? And then we can overlay that with mathematics. That would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. Gnocchi it is. Gnocchi would be. I've only, I've only had homemade gnocchi once. Uh, spotted that you missed it. <laughs> Looks like people converted to gnocchi. Gnocchi is good too. It's the same. Uh, never mind. Uh, it's the same same method. Gnocchi just uh, cooks faster. It's easier to tell when gnocchi is cooked uh, because gnocchi is just basically when it starts floating on top of the water, then you know it's cooked. Okay. So let me. some onion too. Okay. Get some of this prep work done. Throw this to the compost in there. Usually I would just wash it off, but right now, I'll just give it a wipe. It's good enough. 
I'm going to keep in mind we cut onions here, right? So I'm not going to cut anything else on here that is not going to go with the onion. I have another cutting board that I'm going to put the, cut the uh, cucumbers and stuff in there. Okay. So let's put that guy there. ourselves some mint tea. Actually, I can just do it, mix it with this, right? So let me show you. Actually, I'm going to show you here. Let me show you the color of mint tea. It's very clear. Once I pour it, what I end up doing is pour more water into this, replenish. That way we're going to have tea going all the time. Okay, and let me show you the color difference. And this is really weak tea, right? It's like the, and you can see the color difference, right? This tea, I've been, I started you know, getting preference, like around 8 o'clock I put the tea on, right? So it's been four hours of me going through fewer iterations of it. It's nice. It's nice. It's hot, so I'm just going to take sips. How about CBD tea? Chai tea. Or what is that? I think I've heard it before. Hi. Turkish tea. Which one is Turkish tea? Farfel is uh, normal pasta, gross. Oh, which one was the Turkish tea? Uh, sorry, I missed that comment. Okay, so how's the potatoes going? I'm gonna give this guy a little shake, and I'm gonna kick up the temperature now. I think okay. the oven's getting to right now sitting at 280 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I have set it to. 400 okay I want to get it to 400 because we're gonna do the roasted potatoes and then halfway through or so when the potatoes are getting ready the potatoes usually take about depending right depending on the size you got to keep an eye on them right roasted potatoes uh, Turkish tea is demim tea demim tea I don't know demim tea better yet so you know so <laughs> So is that what it says? I think it says Solarium root? What is it? Sicitium. Uh, Sicitium tortusium tea. I don't know what that is. It sounds interesting though. So about, uh, you know, 10, after 10, 15 minutes of the potatoes being there, we're going to give them a little mix. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the, the lamb in there. Yorkshire tea. Let me show you the this is this is the lamb okay, that I marinated yesterday. Okay, let's just put this on top of this. Take a look. Okay, let me bring this up. Let me bring a fork. So what I did. This is a lamb loin chops. So I've marinated this in olive oil, balsamic vinegar. Okay. I was gonna do it in wine, but I just went with balsamic vinegar. With wine is really good too. With balsamic vinegar is fantastic. With rosemary, okay, mint and garlic, right? So there's dried mint in here. And the dried mint basically when I'm marinating, and this is all I do. Bring out the mint and just, you know, take some leaves, right? And all I would do is just, you see the way it's crumbling? And I'll show it to you here. Well, I'm pretty sure you can see that, but I'll show it to you here as well. Right? 
it just crumbles up top and then you shake it up give it a mix and then what I did this morning it was marinating since last night what I did this morning I you know when I was getting prepped for the stuff around 8 o'clock this morning or so I flipped them right so I flipped them so the other side would also be marinated so I'm just gonna give it one more flip Oops. And lamb, you don't need to cook long. So I'm just going to close this off again. Cutlery that we use in there. So I'm going to close this off again. And we're just going to leave it out. Is there any reason you use dried mint rather than fresh mint? Yeah, dried mint you can get around that spreads out more, right? It breaks, dried mint sort of just crumbles, right? That way you can get it all over the meat, you can get it all over the pasta. You can cut up fresh mint I use as well in season, right? You can cut up fresh mint and use it in a garnish and stuff like this, but when cooking, I like using dried mint, and I like using dried rosemaries. We're going to put some rosemaries in with the potatoes as well. So take a look at this. This one is just rosemaries that I picked last night and I gave them a wash, right? We might use some fresh rosemaries as well, okay? And then these ones are rosemaries that, you know, we picked, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It's basically... A, here, let me show you. So we basically pick a plate like this, right, of rosemary. This is what I picked last night and washed. And we let it sit and we let it dry and we use it. And, you know, we did this like two, three weeks ago. I can't remember. And this is the rest of the dry stuff that we have left, right? And rosemaries as well, when you break them up, they break way more easily. So they spread out more in the food. You get the, the flavor. I just like using dried when I'm doing certain types of things, right? Oh, be careful, keeping that cloth on the pot of, oh, for sure, pot of steam, oops, jeez, <laughs> pot of steam, and that heat could cause it to catch fire, especially if it uh, slips, oh, for sure, I don't, uh, I keep an eye on things, but this isn't, uh, when I'm boiling potatoes, I'm here all the time, do not leave cloth for sure great advice advice uh, arc where do you pick up your herbs uh, I pick up uh, the, the rosemaries in our garden the mint in our garden or the neighbor's garden uh, there's lots of mint being grown all over the place uh, that's one of the reasons I end up uh, what do you call it uh, end up doing a lot of drying herbs and stuff like this now take a look at this, the potatoes, because it costs, it, the costs are nothing, right? So I'm going to cook this a little bit more. I'm putting pressure on this to break in. I'm going to cook it more. I want it softer, okay? Let's put that guy there. Does a neighbor uh, know? Yeah, the neighbor knows it. A lot of people in my part of the world, they, uh, they grow a lot of herbs. They grow, there's lots of fruit trees, so... If you see something around the neighborhood that you want to have access to, if you go talk to them, most likely you'll get access to it. Everyone is friendly in Canada. <laughs> until they're not friendly. Right, Index? Everyone's friendly in Canada until they're not friendly. Uh, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, potatoes, onions, we cut up the onions. Uh, let me show you one drink dish sort of that we end up making
This is my supplied yogurt. Right. Let's put the rest of this. Okay, the potatoes. We're getting steam coming out. Before we make the yogurt drink, we're gonna set it up, set the potatoes to be deal with the potatoes. So first thing I'm gonna do, I gotta transfer this. I'm gonna dump it through the sieve in the sink. Okay, uh, that way we get rid of the water, and I'm gonna give it a rinse with cold water. I always do that with the potatoes and I do it with rice and uh, with gnocchi too. We're gonna give it a rinse after we cook it. Okay, so let me do this. See how hot this is. No. Let's use our mitts. Let's use our mitts. Let's turn this off for now. Here's our tray. I'm just using a, I don't know what you call these, a glass tray that goes in the oven. I'm gonna put some oil on it. Okay. Olive oil. That's plenty. Okay. And I'm gonna bring this. And we're just gonna dump it in. In general, you don't want this to be too full. The reason being is you want the heat, things to get crispy with the, with the oven roasted potatoes. Right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna mix this up. And this is sort of almost to max capacity right now, the potatoes, right? A little bit less potatoes would be better because that way the potatoes are, they're all getting heat. They're all gonna get nice and crispy on the outside. I might even reduce a little bit of this. Yeah, I'm gonna reduce a little bit of this. Too much in one plate. So, let's bring this in. And if it's too much, you can just save it, cook it later, right? Not a big deal. So, let's just throw this here. Throw this here. So, that was four potatoes, I think. Right? I had already washed the potatoes and took out the little you know, bits that aren't, you know, they're damaged or whatnot, right? That's good. So I took out this much of it, right? I took out this much out, so we're not gonna cook this one right now in this tray. So what I'm gonna do right now is, I'm gonna bring out rosemary, dried rosemary, right? And I'm gonna break it over this. Right? And dried rosemary, you can just take it and then pull, right? And that 
like the flavor of rosemary. Rosemary is amazing. I'm gonna do one more. Okay. Actually, half a more. We'll do half a more. Okay. So that's how much rosemary. One and a half stems, basically. And then I'm gonna put mint in, right? So the mint, let's see how much mint we're gonna put in. You could make some lovely bubble and squeak with those leftover potato bubble and I don't know what that is. Bubble and squeak. That's a bubble and squeak. And the big stems in this, we don't put, right? Just a leaf, you know, and a little bit of the lesser, smaller stems. even to be oh this one was good some of the mint sometimes is not as crumbly as the other ones and this you do to your taste you know do you like the stuff to be really minty do you want it to be more rosemary do you want you know no mint or no rosemary this is basically the way i make roasted potatoes salt on it right now. I wait until it's cooked to put salt on it. Or uh, it's gone nice and crispy. Okay, that's good. That's good. Let's put that on the potatoes. Give it a shake, right? Nice. And then we're just going to throw it in. So I'm going to put a timer on it. I'm going to go 20 minutes for now. I'm going to keep an eye on it. And I basically put it in the middle shelf. Okay. Let me read a couple more comments. Let's see where we're at. It's a breakfast food. The potato bubble and squeak. Breakfast food in my mystical land. <laughs> Google it. It is very nice. Okay, sweet. Bubble and squeak is a very British breakfast is usually made up from leftover potatoes and stuff from the dinner on the night before oh really nice so it's like a pie thing it could be like a meat pie or something where does the name come from no one knows honestly huh who knows we have a dessert called spotted do you <laughs> spotted thick <laughs> what <laughs> spot of tea i know that's a legit legit thing because spot of tea is saying it right what a dick what crazy crazy let me show you a yogurt drink okay this yogurt drink is amazing uh, i'm gonna use a big thing okay this yogurt drink is absolutely amazing during the summers if you're in a hot area if you live in a hot environment this is something we used to have uh, we used to well we still do but back in the day when we lived in a desert when i was a little kid this was a staple drink that we had right because it replenishes you so you take a little bit of yogurt right it's called dur by the way I iranians call it dur i don't know uh what arabs call it it's middle eastern uh, drink okay and you can make it with either club soda okay or uh, just with water. I'm gonna make it. Um, should we make it with water or club soda? Um, should we make it with water or club soda? I wish we had a poll. Club soda or water, gang? Which one? What do you want to mix with this? <laughs> should we do club soda or water? Do you want a club soda yogurt drink or do you want a water yogurt drink? Club soda. We got. We got one vote for club soda. Yeah, we're not known for our 
food for <laughs> call it tan in Armenian. Uh, you call it tan, tan. Oh yeah, tan in Armenian is called tan. That's right. Oh, la the previously when you said, "Are you gonna make tan?" I, I thought you said tahini. Yeah, tan. We're gonna make tan. We got one water from Spotted Tea. Ark is saying club soda. We got two club sodas, one water. Spotted Tea got burnt last time doing. Uh, you didn't make it for the previous poll. So if we get half and half, half twitch one thousand, we could we could make half and half. We'll satisfy everybody. We're gonna make half and half. We'll do it. All right. Here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this. Okay. And then you're gonna. Break it down. So, and it becomes liquidy. And you don't want the yogurt to be in chunks. Like right now, you still see chunks in there, right? On the spoon. You want the liquid, uh, the yogurt to be fully liquid. So that was about half water, and I got cold club soda in the fridge. So, oh, we finished uh, we finished all the cold club soda in the fridge. So, new club soda. This is a lot, right? Half and half. And hello. Hello, how are you doing? Twitch 1000. Did you get to read issue two of uh, Dam yet? No, no, I haven't read I picked it up though. Harley Quinn, I saw some pages. Harley Quinn looked crazy cool. Crazy cool. I saw the page. I read the page online which said, uh, Hit the bat, uh, hit the bat, hit the bat, hit the bat with a baseball bat. Boom. That was pretty cool. I think that was the same, right? So that's broken down pretty nicely. So all you do is just take mint, right? And just crumble it in there, right? And you want the mint to break down. That's one of the reasons uh, the person that asked, why do you use dried? dry this will mix in to the drink well right if it's not dried it doesn't crumble it becomes in chunks like even this one more crumbly the better for this drink okay. you get more right? i'm just pulling the mint from here salt you don't need to but you just add salt right? especially in uh, in warm climates it's good to have salt because salt helps you to retain liquid right it keeps you hydrated okay. and usually you want to you know you don't make uh, you do actually drink it fresh as well right but Usually you sort of let it sit a little bit. Okay. Apparently Spotted Dick, the name comes from the currents uh, and is making it uh, Spotted Dick. Hmm. Let's make the drink. Okay. So that's enough mint for now. You can put as much mint as you like. see the mint chunks in there right <laughs> fantastic right now it's just floating up top because it hasn't had time to soak in the, the yogurt drink and stuff right and then just give it a drink
fantastic, really. Or maybe it doesn't like the desert, I guess. Let me put on my glasses. Let me read some comments. Check this out. Doesn't like the that desert, I guess. Not a permit. Oh yeah, that's right. Use the leader. Index. Okay, so index approved it. Awesome. That's nice. I haven't had dual uh, for a while because we're in the fall, right? It's usually a drink that we have for the summer. That's nice. Let's put that on the side. So what do we got? Let's clear up our little bits of mint. Okay, another thing I'm gonna make is, let's bring these guys here. Let's set up the meat, okay? And then we're gonna make, uh, where's our tray for the meat? So right now, we've been cooking the potatoes for about nine minutes, right? Let's put this guy here. Let me take a look at them. Because I usually, when I roast potatoes, I constantly look at them. Whenever I think I have something in the oven, I'm checking on it on a regular basis. Okay. Oh, yeah, I got a long ways to go yet. Okay. I'm going to kick up the temperature to 425. But we are gonna transfer the lamb into this glass tray, okay? And what I usually do with the glass trays, I usually, you know, we store them, you know, under the stove, sometimes in the stove or wherever we store these glass trays. But whenever I bring them up, before I end up using them, I usually give them a, give them a sort of a rinse, okay? That's why these guys are sitting over there. If I know I'm going to make something, I give them a rinse, let them dry a little bit and whatnot, right? So, let's lay these guys in there. We don't want to test it anymore. Okay, take a look. And you don't want the lamp to be touching each other. Sometimes uh, one thing you can do with lamb too, with these lamb chops, is there's a bone in there and you can grab a knife and separate the meat from the bone. And what that does, I'm pushing it too far, what that does, it, the meat closer to the bone cooks faster. Usually the, the, meat, the meat that's touching the bone cooks a little bit slower, right? But if you like your stuff rare, if you like it that way, you can just leave it the way it is, right? I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Now take a look at this. This is all the goodies in there, right? All the marinade, I'm gonna pour it out on top. fork in the in the sink because the odds are I'm going to use the fork to do a little flip on this thing right flip the lamp okay next you basically add water to yogurt with some salt it's actually refreshing grew up drinking that yeah it's weird a lot of people this drink uh, I've given it to a lot of friends okay uh, that's telling us we reached 425 should we make it 420? Let's make it 420. There. Let's cook it at 420 instead. And we're already at 420. Uh, this drink here, I've given it to a lot of friends. A lot of people don't like this. They find it really weird. Really weird. Okay. You 
if you've grown up with it, if you know, if you're really thirsty, nothing quenches your thirst like do, okay, or tongue, or yoga drink. So salt makes it refreshing. Yeah, it does. Never heard that before. Yeah, the salt allows, uh, makes you retain water, right? Like you said, right? Sounds weird to me. Yeah, weird. Yeah, a lot of people find it weird. A lot of people find it weird. This yogurt drink. Try it out. Grow, it. grow a flavor for it. Nothing quenches thirst like that. Nothing. I came from the country of spot. <laughs> Spot of these sense. We can't say nothing. Dude. That's funny. So, let's check on the potatoes one more time. Yeah, potatoes in general take a long time to cook. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here. Okay. That's very nice. Yeah. We do have to cut up. Uh, what do you call it? mushrooms as well so let me cut up some mushrooms actually mushrooms should we do right now let's do this first okay let's put this here and let's do this what we're gonna do is fry up some of the dried mint Canada has nothing weird except maybe poutine poutine's delicious poutine's so good what kind of shrooms you got? <laughs> No, I just got the straight, uh, simple shrooms, the white shrooms right now. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't pick up any shiitake. Shiitakes would be amazing too, for sure. Shiitakes would be phenomenal. Okay. Now I'm adding a fair bit of oil because after I fry up the mint, and the mint fries up super fast, right? So you've got to be right on top of it. After I fry up the mint, I'm going to transfer it over to a little plate. And then I'm going to fry up the onions. And then once the, or caramelize the onions a little bit, like slow cook it. And then after that, what we're going to do is um, throw in the mushrooms. Okay. <laughs> Fries, cheese curds, and gravy. Yeah. That's it. You don't want to eat too much poutine. You eat lots of poutine, you'll die of a heart attack by the time you're 20. All right. So, let's heat this up. And then we're going to break down some mint. Let's bring out some mint. Let's just put this on the side. This on the side. And this on the side. And what happens when you fry up greens, fry up mint? They stay for a while. They last for a while. So you can keep them in the fridge. Uh, but they dwindle down a lot. Like in volume they just break down right so you don't get too much of it temperature I'm putting it a little bit above for this that we're gonna fry up the mint a little bit more than m medium okay a little bit more than medium as soon as the olive oil gets nice and fluid I throw the mint in okay. you don't want to burn the mint This is sort of uh, what I'm doing right now. We can use as a garnish for anything, anything like that you're cooking and whatnot. It's uh, it's really nice in soups. There's a, a certain Persian dish uh, called uh, uh, Ash Reshte. It's basically a heavy soup that's based. Uh, it's got lots of greens and it's got noodles in there okay and it's got beans and stuff like this you you eat a lot of it or you can you know it's served a lot during the winter okay and 
And one reason you use a lot of oil for this is because greens suck up a lot of oil. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit more. And I'll just let it sit there and these guys go in the compost area. Nice. So that, that thing. Cousins that live near Vancouver, so I live. Uh, so I've been up to Canada a few times, but I've never tried poutine. Oh, you should try poutine spot of tea for sure. Yeah, you gotta find a good place in Vancouver. Someone's mentioning uh, index uh, poutine. Uh, you can get really bad poutine. So, just like anything, you gotta find the right place for it. fry up okay while well, this is frying up what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop up some of the mushrooms because we're gonna throw some mushrooms in there too okay so let's bring out these mushrooms what I did uh, initially I hadn't planned on throwing mushrooms in but what I usually end up doing is uh, if uh, if I'm doing a cook uh, either for myself or for you guys or for friends and family and stuff like this I usually look in the fridge to see if there's anything that we haven't you know that needs to be used up so I sort of try to uh, plan my cooks or try to plan to use whatever uh, that's been been there a while that needs to be used right and I found these mushrooms I try not to waste too much food. So that's been 20 minutes. That's what the beeping is. Let's take a look at the potatoes. Nice. Okay. That's been 20 minutes. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it, bake, for another 12 minutes. Oops. Bake. Sorry. 420. Bake. 420 keep it at 420 I want the timer to be for another 12 minutes okay and we're gonna put the lamb in there okay. so we're gonna take the lamb oh we gotta be careful with this I can smell them in here's the lamb all right I'm gonna throw that in there and again I'm putting in the middle tray okay so the meat here That's good enough. Okay. There's some stems in there. I may take those out because you really don't want the stems uh, for the garnish. Okay. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna transfer this to here. Put this here. I'm gonna transfer this to here. keep some of the, the flavor of the mint in there okay because here let's do this before I put it down I need to I can give it a wet with this I don't want the oil that might have come down from the side to be on the stove right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the onions in there I'm gonna put the lid on. Okay. And I'm gonna kick down the temperature on this to about two, okay? Or three, okay? Tell you what, it's true what people say. Food is so much better in Canadian, da da da. Okay, people are having a conversation, good stuff. So, Let's do this. Let's chop up the mushrooms. I 
should be using the big knife, but I'm using the little bit. I'm not in a rush. For some reason, I like I like this knife. It's just I like using it, especially if I'm not cutting up too much. Just a little bit of things. So let's take these. That one got contaminated, so we're not gonna use that one. I'm gonna put the mushrooms in a new thing. Someone mentioned uh, previously when they were watching some of the cooking videos, uh, they said that the main, these two cameras shooting here, they were good, but the main camera that we're facing was lagging a little bit. Hopefully, we're not lagging. I said I'd look into it. it. Might have been the connection at the time. Right? So just a bowl of mushrooms that we're gonna fry up as well. Anyone got a fake? I think that. <laughs> just feels perfect to use. Yeah. Yeah. If you feel like if if you find a great knife that you like using, for me anyway. Let this cook. But while that's doing its thing, let me check this. Nice. These guys are still cooking. So we set the timer on 12 minutes. We've got another seven and a half minutes to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up some uh, carrots. Not carrots, uh, cucumbers. Okay. So I'm going to show you this cucumber dish, cucumber yogurt dish that we made. Okay. Let me put this guy here. some cucumbers nice I got five here I don't know if we're gonna use five we'll use four for now let's use the big knife for this the ends of the cucumbers I usually get rid of I don't use okay. this is another dish which is absolutely amazing absolutely amazing for the summer really it's phenomenal for the summer okay. Get my eyes a little rinse. let's chop these up okay. and you can some people chop up the, the the cucumbers really small you can chop them up big it's up to you. I go medium, right? So I'm giving each one of these half slices of cucumber. And these are sort of, I guess they're considered small, but for me they're okay. Let me give this another mix. Yes. I'm gonna kick up the temperature on the onions a little bit. these guys into the bowl so we got this much cucumbers right now okay we're gonna do more we're gonna do more we're gonna do all three of these well we're gonna do two and see how much we got okay See how big they are, right? Let's cut up this one too. Let's 
sometimes two cut down the middle, sometimes three, or for each half. Before we continue, cucumber, right? This is a lot of cucumber. Okay, we'll make a cucumbery nice dish. Let's do this. Good, good. Nice. Let's bring out the potatoes. Let me show you what these guys look. So take a look at this right now. It's getting a little bit crispy. See that? And the skins are really good on the potatoes like this. Right? So I don't peel the potatoes. Okay. Nice, eh? So I'm gonna give it a give it a sort of a shake. Could use a little bit of more oil, but I'm gonna leave it alone. And then it's gonna go back in the oven. Right. I'm gonna cook this longer, much longer. You want it to be nice and crispy. So. Stay there. So that's been 12 minutes. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah. The lamb's gonna stay there longer. So let's take the timer. So it's been there for about 11 minutes, the timer that I sent, right? I set it up for 12, it's been 11 minutes. I'm gonna reset the timer for another 12 minutes. So slowly as you get closer to things being cooked, the time is gonna decrease, decrease the amount of time that I'm gonna be looking at this stuff, right? Okay. I'm gonna kick this up a bit more for the onion. So we're sitting at four out of nine as far as the temperature goes for this guy right here, right? Let me show you the yogurt dish. Cucumbers, right? Yogurt, okay. Throw it in. This, all of it, really. I cut up a lot of cucumbers, so it's gonna be very cucumbery. So you have to decide to your taste how you want it. If you like a lot of cucumber with this yogurt dish, you put a lot of cucumber. If you like a little, you put a little, right? So that's that. The next thing that's a must, right, with this, you can have it just like this. We're gonna mix it all up, right? I'm gonna put in mulberries, dried mar mulberries. Usually this dish is with raisins, okay? You can also use cranberries, but right now I'm into mulberries, okay? <laughs> Fantastic. So just pour in. 
the other thing you can put in here too is walnuts and I'm gonna show it to you because walnuts is the extra thing you can put in right now I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit and of course we're gonna put mint in here right so let me close this up for now I might increase the amount of mulberries I'm going to add the mushrooms after I take care of this. And that's the beauty with the dried mint. You just pour it on into your hand, right? And you can put your other hand on top and you just go like this. You get a little bit on the outside and stuff, but that's okay. Just make sure you're doing it in a place where you can just clean up easy. Salt, a little bit, not much, if you want to, not necessary. Okay, but I'm gonna go like not even, right? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna increase the amount of mulberries just a tad, just to balance out with the cucumber. But I'm gonna taste it first before I do that. all going well in the chat so I don't know you know what the volume of it is is per taste I was gonna taste it actually before I added it but I can just see by by the look of it that I want more when you use raisins for this uh, you can keep it you can keep it in the fridge for a long time. This will last in the fridge for a while. It doesn't, it doesn't for me because I eat it like this much. I'll go through in two, three days, right? If you're using raisins after about three days or so, the raisins give out the color a little bit. The blackness comes out into the yogurt and stuff like this. So the raisin you eat, end up eating faster to a certain degree and the raisin sucks in the water from the yogurt so they puff up a little bit after four or five days or so so i never take it that far um, i don't like it when it does that and cranberries it doesn't puff up too much anyway i haven't made it with cranberries too much right take a look phenomenal really amazing do this. Take care of this guy. Okay. What I'm going to do right now is transfer the onions to another dish, right? That way I have a choice if I want to have, have it mixed with um, have it mixed with uh, mushrooms or not, right? So here's the onions. I could caramelize it more, but that's okay. Or cook it up more. It hasn't reached the 
major caramelized level because I'm not going to use it all up right now. I'm going to use some and then we're going to keep some in the fridge. That's that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to this. Okay. Now I can put it back on the element, and then I'm going to add the mushrooms. Okay. And then I'm going to put the lid back on. Be careful, be careful with these cast iron pans and stuff. They get crazy hot, right? So we got our onion cooked up, right? Nice. So I'm going to put this on the side. We're going to... The lamb's looking good. I'm going to show you one more thing with this. So I'm going to transfer this over because I'm not going to put walnuts in this whole thing, okay? You can make this dish with walnuts, uh, but right now I don't want the whole thing to be with walnuts. Taking for this, I'm taking three of these guys. You break it up, three halves. You could take more. Let's see how many halves we're gonna take. There's three. Let's do more. I go by sight for this. Four, five, six. So six of these guys. Six halves. Is that a lot? No, that's good. Mix it all in. You could do less, and you can taste it up. Right? And you get the crunchiness of it. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. The last thing you do, and it's not traditional, hemp seeds. You can definitely put hemp seeds in there too. So let's put some hemp seeds in there. Not too much. Hemp seeds and yogurt, amazing. With cucumbers, phenomenal, right? So you're getting protein. You're getting dairy if you like dairy. You're getting your veggies. You're getting your cucumbers. You're getting your mulberries, uh, sugar, carbohydrates in this. Phenomenal dish. For the summer, absolutely amazing, right? And it doesn't have to be as dense with all the goodies in there, okay? You can make it more yogurty if you like. This is really good. So, let's take a look at this. Let's check this out. kick this down to really low it's the, actually I'm gonna turn it off for now okay so this guy is off we're gonna take a look at the lamp but before we take a look at the lamp I'm gonna take this I'm gonna shake this out I forget how much the time was that we set it but we're about to take the timer off it was one minute left show you what it's like on the inside so that was about 11 minutes 11, about 20 minutes of the lamb 
cooking, right? And that, ooh, that is medium. Okay, that's perfect. I'm not gonna cook this anymore. Okay, you could set it to broil right now. Should we set it to broil? Let's do it. Let me show you what it looks like when you broil it. Because what I can do right now is I can flip it and let it broil. Let's do that. Let's flip it and broil it. Now remember, the potatoes are in there as well, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put this guy in the top shelf, okay? And, um, let's put these guys here. I'm gonna put this on the top uh, shelf. I'm gonna move the potatoes to the top shelf. I'm gonna boil it, uh, broil it for about five minutes. The lamb, the odds are I'm gonna take out in a couple of minutes. Change it, stop it, broil it. Broils at 550, okay? So we're gonna leave that broil and I'm gonna put the timer on for five minutes, really. With a broil, you don't mess around. You don't go more than five minutes. Sometimes you'll put it on two minutes or three minutes. One man come in the name of love. That's you too, I know those lyrics. I used to play Sunday, Bloody Sunday on the drums. Um, so what else we're gonna do? This is cooked. Should we cook this a little bit more? Let's shake it up a little. Let's take a look. I'm gonna give this guy another blast at half. And what we're gonna do is, we gotta cook the gnocchi, right? care of this nice I'm gonna put this beside the mud beside the mint that way you see Here's the mushrooms. That's the mint right there. There's the mushrooms, mint. And we got our onions right here. Right. So we're gonna leave these guys here. This guy here. This is this. There. Make some food for ourselves. Let's put that there. Take this lid, it's hot, so you better be careful. And put it there. Cool. And I'm gonna put some water in this guy and boil it. Because we're gonna make gnocchi. And if we're gonna make gnocchi, I'm kicking this temperature to high. We're gonna boil the water. Okay. So that's there, that's there. Ooh. How's our timing for this? Oh yeah, we gotta bring this out. So that's been three minutes in the broiler. I'm turning it off. Take a look. show them to you. I can't show them to you close up. So these guys are done. Fantastic. Let's put this guy here. Be careful with this. Let me lift up. Here, let me cut the lamb for you. So you see, it might have cooked a little bit too much, right? Because I forgot about it. 
I should have set the timer. Take a look. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Looks delicious. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of this so it doesn't cook anymore. Okay. So let's put it in a plate. this guy I'm surrounded by things actually let's put this guy here for now and what we've got to do is get the juices out of this because this is fantastic we don't want to waste this Turn off the timer. And that was a timer for the broil for five minutes, right? So when you're cooking, five minutes may seem it's a long time. Things are right at the cusp of being done. So I'm gonna transfer this. I just put something, the hot uh, glass tray in the sink. I gotta make sure I don't put any cold water on it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that in mind. The only reason I put it in there when it's that hot is because I'm running out of room, right? So take a look at this. Which one can you see? You can see this one, I'll cut this one. So this guy's medium. so we taste it and I don't mind eating the fat if it's a little crispy right let's see now I haven't added salt to this dip it into the sauce a little bit That is really good. I'm gonna eat one more chunk. Oop. I'm not letting my fork touch anything else. Okay. Don't double dip. Mm. That is really good. Let me show you two potatoes. Mm. That is really good. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry about the sound. <laughs> Loud. Yum. Feel free to send some of that <laughs> to your friend. <laughs> decaf. Ah, decaf. How are you doing? I'm so jelly. Ah, fun. Delicious. I'm going to bring this one out. I'm going to show you what the potatoes look like. Here, we'll bring out this one. Here. We're going to eat this today, right now. All right. I'm going to take this guy. Let me show you the potatoes, the roasted potatoes. And I do want to put salt on them, so let me show them to you. Here's the roasted potatoes. I could put it in there to crisp up a little bit. I'm going to give it a shake and maybe broil it for another couple of minutes. Right? But what I'm going to do right now is add some salt. it up. Nice. Put some in this. That way we can munch on it. 
I'm going to put it in there for a couple more minutes. Decaf, if that's you, if you guys like ASMR math, she does phenomenal ASMR math stuff on YouTube. Very fun. So let's throw this back in. Just a couple of minutes, that's it. Broil, start, two minutes, start. While that's doing this thing, where do we put our fork? Hmm. I mis misplaced my fork. Where do we put the fork? Where do we put the fork? Oh, we lost the fork. Okay, let me try this fork. Let me show you. Should I got the potatoes? Right. Potatoes are usually hot on the inside, right? That was really good. <laughs> Call him again. That looks good. I cooked it a little bit more than I usually cook it. Should have kept a closer eye on it, but we were busy making other food, right? Did I use salt? Hmm. Maybe. Not too much. Not too much. That's a bit thick. Bring it up. Delicious. Mm. Very good. We got our water boiling. Time for gnocchi. Okay. As soon as our bo water boils, I throw the gnocchi in. I kick the. Oh, I forgot about the potatoes. Dangerous, dangerous. I kick the temperature down. Okay. I want to burn the potatoes. Nice. That's good. I'll show them to you. By the way, the timer is your friend in the kitchen. Use the timer. Take a look. Hear the sound? That's what you want. Nice potatoes. Delicious. Crispy. Put the gnocchi in the water, right? I give it a shake, always, when I put the gnocchi in. And put the temperature down to about four out of nine. Okay, so, let's put that guy there. Put that guy there. There's a balancing act here. Put that guy there. Okay. What we need to do is, prep our bowl where we're going to put the gnocchi in uh, but that gives us we got a couple more minutes so i'm gonna eat a couple more potatoes we didn't eat enough of the yogurt check it out this is usually a dish that you put on the table with dinner at you know serious gatherings birthdays holidays and stuff like this Good night, Art. Sweet dreams. Phenomenal.
and I'll skip this guy in. Mix. I'm going to cook up the, uh, kick up the temperature a bit. I put it down to four because I don't want to get away from me, right? So, let's have one more lamb bite. And then we're going to prep. Um, for the gnocchi. Very delicious. Okay, I'm going to put this aside. So, and we need to take care of this guy because we got gnocchi dish coming, right? I kicked it down too far. We definitely do need the water to boil in this. So I'm going to kick it up. Okay, I'm just going to take out one of the gnocchis just to see what type of shape it's in. Okay. usually want it floating, but I might have turned it down a little bit too much. I recognize the face of... Hmm. The gnocchi is good to go. Let's put our fork here. That's our eating fork. Let's put that there. Let's put that there. Let's put that there. Okay. Now for the new key, we got another sift in. Okay. Well, actually, no, I do need to take it out of the water. I don't want it overcooking. New key, you gotta be careful with. You don't want to overcook. Transferred into the school. Okay. Here's our gnocchi. Usually, I would take care of the gnocchi. I wouldn't put it in the bowl right away. I would have already set up the base for it. But because the gnocchi was done, we're going to do it this way. So, this guy, we're going to put oil on top. Olive oil. And we're going to bring out cheese. This is straight up feta. Okay. It's fairly soft feta. Like you can tell. It's really soft feta. Okay. Look at that. I'm going to break it up here. I'm going to start pouring on top of the gnocchi. Okay. Okay, that's good. Now what we're going to do is put this guy here. Take our mint and start 
breaking up mint on top of the gnocchi and then what we're going to do is mix it all up if it needs more oil we'll put more oil usually I would have already mixed it up because you don't want the gnocchi to be stuck together you want oil to be sort of each gnocchi to have a little bit of oil on it so it doesn't all clump up Let's give it a mix. Sometimes I put a little bit of balsamic vinegar on this. Okay. I'm going to taste it. I'm going to see if I feel like having balsamic vinegar on here right now. I'm going to pour more mint. As soon as you pull some of the stems out of the mint jar, it loosens up more of them so they come down, the more drier ones, and you can just break it up like this. Mix it up. So this is food for like a couple of days, right? <laughs> At least. <laughs> or a couple of days, three days most likely. So let's give it a taste. Let's give it a taste. We'll give it a taste with a spoon. Let's see. I don't want any chunks, huge chunks of feta. Take a look. There's like meat chunk there. And it's really good. And you don't have to add salt because the feta is already salty, right? So don't add any salt to this. Okay. And here's our dish. Here's our gnocchi feta mint dish. Right. Very nice. It complements uh, the lamb really well. Uh, it's sort of like the potatoes because it's just basically starch, right? I feel like having more of it. <laughs> On a spoon, this spoonful word. Oh yeah, this is all stuck together, right? I was mixing it, so I'm gonna pop this. Very nice. Very nice. have a sip of tea so let's put these guys here I'm gonna check my menu right what, what I set up to do just to make sure we did everything because I think we got everything covered right oh we haven't done the soup let me show you what I do with all this garnish stuff I made right we have One more dish to show you. One more thing to show you, right? Where is your better half? My better half is working. So she's gonna be very happy to come home to find all this food just prepped up for the next few days to eat, right? So this is some uh, chicken slow cooked like for 12 hours. Uh, food, take a look. L like chicken bone with rice and some veggies and onions and stuff just cooked for like 12 hours and we let it warm, stay warm for like four hours that we were eating like for the last two days. And this was made about it was made three days ago, so this is the third day, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna heat this up, and the garnish of the mint and stuff that we've made, the mint and onion and mushroom, I'm gonna mix in with this, right? So let's just, there isn't that much of it, right? Very little. This was super yummy. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bring a spatula. Spatula and get all this 
goodness into the bowl. wasn't making so many dishes I'd be cleaning as we were cooking but since I'm making so many dishes no time to clean while we're cooking right so let's just heat this up it'll heat up speedy Gonzalez because there isn't too much of it let's put this here I'm gonna read a couple comments quick wise let's check it out Thanks, Jisho. I'm so happy to finally catch one of your streams. Now I'm so hungry. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks, Anon. All right. So, da, 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 da. I are one man portrays one da, da, da. I recognize the face. That's gonna be good. Nice. All right. Daddy's in heaven. Wow, that's awesome. Nice, nice. I've missed a lot of uh, chit chat while we're going ballistic with the multitasking. Cool. If you had any questions that I missed, please uh, post it again. We've slowed down now. Now it's like enjoying. We're gonna eat a little bit of soup. And with the dual, if you let it sit, the yogurt sort of separates from the the water or the soda and stuff, right? So before you drink it, you give it a little shake. And this is uh, one of the main drinks that people drink when they're eating like shish kebab and stuff like this. You can actually buy this stuff in bottles. They sell it both carbonated and not carbonated. the drink what's that called it's called uh, in Persian they call it do in Armenian you call it tan uh, I don't know what it is in Arabic I'm pretty sure in Israel in Hebrew I don't know what you call it in Hebrew I'm pretty sure they have it as well I don't know not 100% sure so it's a drink that they have in the Middle East and I think I'm pretty sure they have it in the northern northern Africa as well and most likely parts of Asia with Afghanistan and most likely India as well okay I don't know if it there is uh, any other uh, sort of a staple drink in any of the countries outside of that area but it's basically yogurt okay so you put you take basically what we did we took for this glass we took this much yogurt right and then you we did half and half you could do it all water you could do it all soda what we ended up doing was doing this much water or put it to this high with water and then filled this much of it with soda and then you could also put cucumbers in there too but we don't because we haven't made the cucumber thing so and then you mix it up so the yogurt is not chunky it's all broken down really fine and then put mint dried mint in there and then salt a little bit of salt to, to your taste right and then you mix it up and it's a phenomenal drink if you're uh, in hot environments if you're thirsty the best uh, thirst quencher ever really okay the best thirst quencher ever check out the potatoes Super nice. I like the potatoes. 
Okay, this is heating up. My tummy is really happy right now. I was looking forward to this. Flipping heck, I actually just fell asleep for a while watching this. I think work is tiring me out. Do you grow mint? Yeah, I had, we grow uh, a certain amount of mint here. So I harvest that for sure. But in the neighborhood, there's a lot of people that grow mint. Mint is weed, it grows like crazy. So, uh, and it loves, mint loves being trimmed, right? loves having the tops trimmed off because it splits off and grows more thicker and it propagates with its roots and stuff so we do grow mint and we uh, dry mint here's a video we put out a video if you take a look at that one here let me turn off this this video oops not that one this one this video that you see here uh, we put that video out like about month and a half ago or so where we I did a huge harvest at the end of the season and uh, I hung you know cut the mint uh, put a little rope around them floss actually and hang hang dry them and then we ended up jarring them and we ended up getting like five and a half I believe five and a half jars of this or six six jars of this right so there's a video out there if you just do chicho and mint it should pop up harvesting mint is really important for me uh, it's a it's mint as you can tell this is just some of the main dishes that we use mint for right and I may use up a lot of potatoes I like potatoes roasted potatoes and stuff like this with lamb with meat we end up using it uh, with yogurt this eat a lot of it so I go through a lot of mint we just crack this open right and we went through half of it okay so we went through half a jar but usually we don't I don't usually end up making all mint dishes right and mint if you buy it in the store is very expensive which I find crazy because mint grows like weed I'm going to show you what we end up doing with the garnishes here. Here, let me transfer these guys over. We don't need these guys no more. Serious balancing act. Okay. So I'm just going to transfer the soup over to this. Oh, that's a mushroom. Here, let's put the gnocchi aside. Take down, put this video up, take the mint video thing down, turn this guy, turning this guy off. We don't need this guy, so I'm gonna take this video down. Um, oops, oops, took the wrong one now. Take this video down. Nice. Alright, so I'm just gonna transfer the soup in here. Okay. This is chicken bone soup with the rice and it's just fully broken down. For this type of soup, any 
any soup, strong soup like this, right? What we end up doing is we have mint here, dried mint, or fried, fried dried mint, right? That we just made earlier. So take a little bit of this, throw it in there. All right, that's a fair bit that I just put in. Take some mushrooms that we fried up, throw it in. All right, and with onions too, you can just take some of the onions, caramelized onions, and throw them in. You could do all three, you could do one, you could do two, you could do combination of them, right? If you do your mathematics, you, you got six different combinations, three factorial, because you got three ingredients. Mix it all up. And especially for strong soups like this that are leftover that you've been eating for like three days and stuff, it gives it a different flavor, so it, it's like changes up the leftover you're making some something new but just adding a little bit something to it so you don't get sick of the same food right and it's fantastic this was amazing soup really slow cooked soup it was so good so good for the tummy so good for winter Very nice. Very nice. Right, I'll take one more bite. One more spoon. Like we cooked it to a level where the bone is just powdery now. Right? Delicious. <laughs> did we cook everything? We did everything we wanted to get done. That's pretty good. That's a lot of dishes we made. Oh, that's fried meat. Fried mint, it, it gives it, uh, it gives it a minty flavor for sure, but it breaks down the green that it's not, it's not overwhelming mint. It's just nice heavy mint flavor inside the broth, inside the soup right it's really good when you're mixing it up you look like you could teach me about the benefits of benefits of uh, marijuana with a batch <laughs> mint with mushrooms <laughs> mint, uh, mint. Uh, there is tremendous benefits to cannabis of course right but like anything must be used appropriately if it's going to be used wow. delicious very nice very nice so let's see how long did it take us to make all this food Let's check this out. I think I need some more um, fresh mint tea or warm mint tea. Right? Yeah. Nice. I'll replenish the top after. Hey Chicho, can you say hi to my dad? He just came over to say hi and he's watching you. Bare of Ishbese Klavik. The Sacha them California. It bond du sarkang, tang sarkang, chamang. Yev Majun. I know how to call it in. Uh, from the sounds of it, you're Eastern, you're Turkish, Ar Ar uh, Armenian, Zara, so I'm not, I'm using a lot of Farsi words, uh, but Majun uh, Chamich, but Bon, Tutov, Tut is uh, Persian, mulberries, with mulberries, cucumber, mint, a uh, little bit of salt, and walnuts, 
this is a staple. I, in my part of the world, us Armenians, we eat it, the Persian Armenians. What else did we make? We made, we made fried potatoes. He's, <laughs> he's smiling and laughing. He has no idea what's happening right now. <laughs> Live streaming. Yeah. What's our? Lamb. Right? Delicious, delicious. Mad we made four of these. I ate one, or I ate three quarters of one. I'm gonna finish the rest after we finish the stream. Oh yeah. We made gnocchi with feta and mint, olive oil. No salt needed. It, the feta was salty enough. Fantastic, super delicious. We also made, let me take this down. We also made a big mess in the kitchen that I'm gonna clean up. Fun stream, fun stream, fun stream. Had to organize this uh, to be able to do all this in a row. And we made, we didn't make a little bowl of yogurt thing. We made a big bowl of yogurt with mulled berries and this. This is going to sit in the fridge for three days. I'll go through this. Two days. I'll go through this. Super delicious. Super delicious. Okay. So that's about it, gang. I hope you enjoyed. I got to remember what that dish was. Uh, the British dish with the potatoes. That I got these potatoes left over. I'm going to put them in the fridge, but uh, I'll try to look through the chat again. To go through to figure out what the dish was that uh, uh, the people from the UK were saying uh, to do a little search to see how to make it sounded good I'm not sure about the other one <laughs> the, I forgot what the spot of tea said it was it was fun it was fun three days three days two days one day eat it all now <laughs> But that would be too much, I think. Maybe my partner wouldn't be pleased if I ate all that. It's, I gotta share. That's all the food must be shared. Must be shared. Fantastic. Fun stuff. How long have you been going at this? Let's check it out. Up time. Hopefully the stream didn't break at all. Yeah, it didn't break. Awesome. Awesome. That's fantastic. Sometimes the stream breaks from Twitch, and I hope it wasn't laggy. I hope it wasn't laggy at all. Fun. Thanks for being here, gang. I hope you enjoyed. Um, and again, when you're cooking in the kitchen, do with it as you please, right? Um, this is to my taste. Uh, so if you want to reduce the salt, you reduce the salt. If you want to increase the yogurt in the yogurt dish, you increase the yogurt. If you want to increase or decrease the cucumbers, you decrease the cucumbers. Mix it all up. And the lamb... I overcooked a little bit right I shouldn't have put it in I just wanted to show you guys when it's like broiling up top of the lamb it looks so good so good so I should have done that a little bit earlier right I cooked it a little bit too much but still tastes phenomenal just one day of marinating in garlic rosemary mint and that's where the mint comes in for the uh, for the lamb for this dish right mint olive oil and uh, a little bit of balsamic vinegar just mix it up and then you flip it in the morning so you can cook it in the for lunch in the afternoon right and both sides of the lamb get the marinade on there fantastic fun thanks for being here gang and i'll see you guys on saturday possibly if you feel like talking saturday evening politics and economics that's the last stream we got scheduled and after that we're looking towards the end of next week for more streams or not this weekend coming up but next weekend 
more streams coming up. Okay. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys there. Bye for now.